How's it going everybody? Today we're gonna just wash the car up. We're gonna do a few things today. There's a bunch of things I've still gotta do. I've gotta slightly change the tune on the car. I also have to change the plates. One of the tricky situations with the plate is though, there it is, the mounting screws for it, they are one way. So we're gonna have to figure out how to take those one way screws off. I probably shouldn't have put them on there knowing that I was gonna sell the car soon. But yeah, we'll figure out how to do that one. I'm not sure if I'll do that today or tomorrow. We have to head off to the Department of Transport and ask them for the transfer papers and for the license plate transfers. So we have to get two pieces of paper off of them. One to transfer the whole entire car and the other one is to transfer the plates over because I'm obviously keeping those plates. But firstly, we have to wash this entire car down. It's completely messy and dirty. While I go through washing the car, I'll also note to mention some of the important things when washing this car. But for now, let's just wash the entire car. to wash is this right here, all this polish and wax, and I just use a bit of this, just the wash and wax, mix them two together, put in the thing, mix them up, wet the car, once you've wet the car, pretty much just want to soap it all down. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna head and wash the car over. You may have saw me, I didn't do the rims. That's because I always like to do the rims last after I wash the car with water because I don't want the soap to dry up in there. I'm just gonna wash the rest of the car. Finish wetting the car after we just washed it again. I'm gonna finish up with the rims. A tip with this car as well, something to mention, is when you wash, I'll show you guys afterwards, but when you wash it and you wipe it with water, there's gonna be some areas that drip, heaps. The thing you can do with that is obviously use the, a, um, if you have like a blower of some sort, you can just blow all the water out. But I usually just go for a drive, let it all come out, and then just wipe it afterwards, all the water mark. So gonna get to the rims now, finish up with those ones. Done cleaning out the rims, we're just gonna dry the towel up completely and I'll get back to you guys once it's done. So, it's done, wiped it all up. Some of the most important things now which I'm going to mention about when cleaning a Mark V is first things first is when you've got a hatchback like this one right here, water builds all up in here and that can be really really annoying when you drive and you come back and then there's water all over the bottom of your bumper. So the main thing I just like to do is I just continuously wipe off of it. Just wipe off till all the water's gone from there. So that solves that first issue. Now the second issue that we come to is right here. This bit, you have 
so much water that comes straight down from here, whether it comes up from here, travels its way down, makes it down there, and then drips down the sides. This happens on both sides, and then you'll notice water continuously marking down. That's one that's on this side and the other side. Now we move further on along to this car, right here where this, this little bad boy side mirror is, underneath here, you'd have, underneath here, water is the worst. It drips straight down along here, but basically, yeah, when you're driving as well, all that water just spreads straight along to the side of your car and it looks horrible. One other thing is the gas tank. You can probably already spot it straight up along here from underneath. Water drips down, but that one's usually fine. You can usually just wipe that a couple times or just put the corner inside and then just collect the rest of it. And for the love of God, if you're cleaning your car, please, please just take that extra like minute or two to just ever so kindly open your door, look at the door jam, and give that a wonderful wipe. Because the amount of people who wash their car, and then I, don't, I see them, they don't even open their door and clean their door jams, and it looks absolutely horrible from the inside. It's just too many. So make sure you clean your door jams. Otherwise, I'll give you shit for it and other people will give you shit for it. Now, that you've cleaned this up, you think your door jams are done? No, they're not done, no, no. You have to go underneath your door and wipe underneath your door. Because that's the reason why it gets wet. From underneath, the water stays up and you can see all of the little droplets underneath here. And then when you close your door, it's just gonna get wet again. So there's absolutely no point to that. So make sure you clean your door jams. Cleaning your door jams is like, um, I'd have to say on the priority list number one because it's pretty goddamn important. Do all sides, do both sides, do everything. Make sure you do it. Just, just make sure you do it. Just be a good person and take care of your car by cleaning your door jam. Look at that. Doesn't look so much better when you actually properly take care of your car and you clean your door jams. You see the nice shiny blue. Wipe underneath. You gotta make sure you get that underneath stuff. And then only now, only once you've done that, you can say that your car is officially cleaned. Now another thing to mention, probably mentioned a whole heap of shit, but this, this one is a bit annoying in my opinion. You, I mean, you don't notice it, but straight here where you close the door, right there, that joint in between there, a bunch of water leaks down from the top all the way down here, and you'll notice that when you open and close your doors, it presses all the water down and just shoots it down underneath. It's not that much of a problem, but it's a problem. The next most important thing when washing a car is to always, always use Windex. Use Windex to clean the window. Don't use the water that you just washed and your sponge because no matter how much you do it, you can still see all the little, little water marks there, and they won't come off. You have to sit there scrubbing for like 10 minutes. So you grab Windex, because that, my friend, is probably the best thing that you can use to clean your windows. I'm headed to the bottom of the bottle. I've been drowning, I've been floating away. Alrighty, right, fellas, we've arrived at the place. The driver and vehicle services, aka the Department of Transport. So here at the place that failed me four or five times. Let's see if they'll pass me this time. I'm just picking up some forms. Alrighty, we're back. Got the papers. First paper, right here, this one is the nomination of vehicle, optional, fucking, yeah. Basically to switch over plates with somebody in my family. I've got that blue Ford out there that has my old plates. Those plates used to be on this car. These plates used to be on that car. So it's just gonna be switching them back again. Next, what we got is two things that we're meant to get and we got both of them. This one is notification of change of ownership for the vehicle. So as you can see on this one, is the blue copy. Um, seller's copy, and then we have the red copy, which is the purchaser's copy. Um, forgot which one you have to give in, but you give in one of them. 
the department takes one, you keep the other. So the two forms that we needed to get, changing the license plate and changing the ownership of the car when, it, when we do hand over the car and all of that stuff. What's, what's left is, we've got a couple things left to do with this car. One of them is getting rid of those one-way screws. I have a method, we'll try that. I'll show you guys in the next one. So the method for me removing the plates with the one-way screws that's going to involve me using a grinder. That's the method I have in my head that I'm going to do. But in the meantime, work hard and stay positive. Catch you guys in the next one. So you find your way back home.